Hi, and welcome back to Ask GMBN Tech. This, of course, is our weekly Q&A show. You ask the tech questions, and we give you something that hopefully you can take away and answer your question. Uh, any questions you have, please use the hashtag Ask GMBN Tech in the comments underneath, uh, or you can email us to hellotech at gmbn.com. That's it, right at the bottom of the screen there. Okay, so first up this week is from Catherine. Hey, Doddy. Hey, Catherine. Uh, currently, I'm using a quick release on my front wheel, but after taking the wheel on and off for storage, the quick release lever never wants to stay tight. Uh, the wheel is constantly loose no matter how much I fix and retighten the release. Is it the axle itself or the hub or something else? Um, could be a few things, to be honest. It's kind of hard to see without a picture of it. Um, so the basic idea of the quick release, you have the skewer that runs all the way through the middle. On one end, you have a lever, and it's got a cam operation. And on the other end, you have a knurled nut, basically, and there'll be two little springs. Um, you can live without the springs. They just make it a bit easier to keep it central for when you put the wheel in. Now, you want to make sure that the nut itself, the knurling on it, is still quite knurly, because otherwise it won't have any grip to be able to tighten it up. So if it's a really old one, that could be part of the problem. Uh, the other problem is you haven't tightened it up sufficiently for the cam to grip. Uh, that is the number one candidate for that. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is you might not have actually got it completely into the dropouts. Um, sometimes you have these little safety tabs on the bottom that actually prevent the wheel from coming out. So you could have loosened it off and actually it's not sat back in quite. Um, you'll have to have a look at that. Feel free to take a photo of it and send it in to us, but I suspect it's just not been tightened up enough for the cam to operate correctly on there. Uh, also, one other thing to take into account as well, the operation should be really smooth on that lever. Uh, sometimes when you tighten them, it can be quite hard and it might put an imprint on your hand, uh, but it should still be smooth. So you might, if yours isn't, want to use some sort of lubricant, perhaps something like a water displacer, WD-40, anything like that, uh, to spray on the inside of it to make sure there isn't any stuff in there that shouldn't be, and then basically a bit of thick chain lube will probably do it just to make sure it's uh, operating nice and smoothly, and hopefully that will be sorted. Failing that, you'll have to get a new one, but they're not expensive, um, and please do get one because it's safety. Good luck. Next up is from Zach Farrelly. Um, Ask GMBN Tech, has it been proven that 29 inch wheels are actually faster? Um, yes, but I think only in a straight line, as in literally rolling through the same section of trail in a number of different situations. 29 inch wheel will roll over slightly bigger bumps, it won't stall as much. So in a straight line, it will be faster. Um, but that's not always the case because it's down to the way that the rider rides. Um, also, there's a bunch of other little factors to consider as well. So 27 and a half inch wheels, if we just use that as the comparison between the two. Right, so they're obviously smaller. That means they're technically for the same, same sort of wheel. Basically, they're gonna be lighter, so they will accelerate faster. It also means they're gonna decelerate faster as well, I slow down faster. Uh, that's a good thing because for changes of direction, you can accelerate and slow down quickly. The downside, of course, with the smaller wheel is it doesn't hold speed as much. However, because of the fact that they accelerate faster, it's easier to top up on that speed. So if you're the sort of rider that likes to bob and weave and jump over stuff, smaller wheels may well be better for you. Um, but the bigger wheels, of course, they do hold that speed better, which is why most EWS racers uh, on the Enduro World Series, uh, they're choosing the bigger wheels. They might be a bit slower, basically, off the gate to get going, but they will hold that momentum a bit better. And also the fact on the rougher tracks, the bigger wheels do float over those holes and bigger obstacles just that little bit better. So that is important. There's often something not taken into consideration with big wheels. They actually don't slow down as fast. And the reason for that, a um, little bit of theory with this, is bottom bracket height. So on 27 and a half inch wheels, your bottom bracket is roughly in line with your wheel axle, sometimes a little bit below, uh, but not crazy. And when you go hard on the anchors on the front brake, because you're quite high up on the bike, you load that front wheel. So you get a lot of traction on it and you can slow down faster. With 29 inch wheels, your axle, uh, your BB in relation to those wheel axles is a lot lower. And when you apply the same braking forces, you actually push, push forwards a little bit more than you push down. So it can mean that the wheels combined 
with the extra speed that you may be holding with them and the fact that they're a lot bigger and heavier anyway, you don't slow down as fast. Now I have spoken to some racers about this and they do accept the fact that you basically, they're dancing on the brakes a little bit, they're never really on the anchors at any one point like you or I might be. You know, it's more like, think of it as a speed control. Like Neil, he doesn't really touch his brakes too much, he kind of uh, just controls that speed as such, whereas I actually want to slow down when I need to. Um, so from that point of view, 29 wheel is definitely going to be faster. Okay, next starts from Amir Gonan. Ask Jambian Tech, I have my dad's 2004 Cannondale Scalpel. It's got a lefty on it and the 26 inch wheels that came with it. I've since crashed it and the front wheel's a bit bent, not too much, a uh, bit annoying. And I'm finding it quite difficult to get 26 inch lefty wheels for the price of normal wheels. Um, is it possible to just buy normal wheels and switch the hub or do I need to find a lefty wheel that will fit? Um, okay, well firstly, what I would say is you don't need to do that. If you're considering taking a hub out of a wheel, your best bet is just to get a new rim and do a rim swap, basically. So you keep your existing spokes and the existing hub, and basically you put the rim next to it, and one by one you swap those spokes over. Uh, it's actually quite a simple process. I'm not sure though that we've made a video on it, so you've given me a great idea to make that video. Um, it is really simple, but like anything with wheels, you have to go, you know, it's a bit steady eddy because you can jump in too fast and end up making things worse before you make them better. And with a wheel, there's obviously there's a lot of spokes, you know, from 28 up to 36 spokes typically on a wheel. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong, but it is simple. You just have to be very patient. Um, we're gonna make that video. So if you can hold on a little bit, um, try and persevere and we'll make that and guide you through it. If not, there are other ways of doing it. Of course, you can just buy a new wheel uh, with the lefty hub on there. I'm sure if you looked on eBay, you will find them. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I've got a couple knocking around somewhere. All right, a couple of questions here from Miguel Vela. Firstly, um, and I feel for you just reading this, says, are bottom bracket creaks and noises common? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, they're one of the most annoying things for any cyclist. Uh, and unfortunately, you do get them on mountain bikes quite a lot. Um, more commonly, you're gonna get them with any sort of press fit style uh, bottom bracket. And the reason for that is there's a phenomenon known as walking, where the actual bottom bracket can like margin, and we're talking like a microscopic amount, move around on the inside, and you think that that's basically amplified through the frame tubes and stuff, uh, and it translates, unfortunately, as creaking. Um, I'm gonna put a link actually after this video um, for our video on stopping one of those happening, stopping your basically your bottom bracket maintenance. So uh, hopefully if that is what you have on your bike, it will tell you how to stop doing that. Okay, so next question also from Miguel. Um, he's got internal cable routing on his Trek Marlin Vibe and it's making a bunch of noises. And uh, now I'm worried. Okay, so internal cable routing, um, it's a great thing because it looks nice and neat because your cables obviously they're not everywhere externally on the bike, but it can be a bit of a pain and it can move around. So there's various different things that happen uh, and so you can make an understanding of this. So there's different styles of internal cable routing and it does differ on different manufacturers, even on the same manufacturer, in fact, there could be different levels of what they do. Um, on the very upper end, you might find it's got a channel on the inside, you can literally feed an outer cable straight in there, uh, which is great because nothing really moves around. On other bikes, you can just simply get a hole at either end of the frame and you have to sort of poke it through and of course that cable when you're moving on the bike uh, over rough terrain it can slap around on the inside. Uh, the quick and easy way to stop those moving around is literally just to pull it taut to either end and use a cable tie or something similar just basically hold the cable in place so it can't move within the frame. Just bear in mind if you do this uh, and your bike has suspension on this, this is for any viewers out there, bear in mind that the cable is going to want to move at some points as the rear swing arm of the bike moves so just check the movement of that before you basically secure it in because otherwise you're going to get other issues like ghost shifting which is something that can happen where you change gears basically unintentionally you're not actually changing gears it just happens from the outer cable being moved fore and aft in the frame so uh, yeah we can do that sort of thing um, okay and the final one also from Miguel so three questions in one actually not two I've got a RockShox Reba with a lockout on the handlebars but it's not working um, how do I convert it to a lockout on the fork itself Okay, so on a RockShox Reba, in fact, of any of the RockShox, they have motion control dials, and depending on which damper you have, you can, I believe, on some of them, but not all of them, change the actual dial on the top. If not, you will need to change the actual damper unit that goes in. Um, I don't think it's the end of the world. I think you're talking about a part that's about 30 or 40 quid or something, um, and basically unscrew that from the top of the 
fork leg and instead of having literally the dial that's operated by the cable remote at the bars, basically it has a separate dial, uh, probably a low and a high speed compression or a three position dial, depending on which model of damper you have. There's lots of different options out there. Um, you can check this on the RockShox website, you will have part numbers, so you can actually find out the specifics. Um, and you can do it, because I've done it before. Um, it just depends on a particular model. So um, look it up and good luck. Okay, so Lee Campion wants to know, um, I was wondering if you can change your lower stanchions on your forks. Uh, I have quick release on my Recon, so RockShox Recon fork. I was wondering if you could change them so I could put through axle on. Uh, also, what is offset? Okay, well firstly, uh, the lower legs just in there, the upper legs, are called the stanchions, and the lower legs are called the sliders because they slide over the stanchions. Um, yes, you can do that. You can buy a new set of sliders for your fork, um, but it's not cheap. I think for yours, for uh, Recon, you're probably looking around 80 quid. It does depend on the model uh, and the year model that you have. So you can do that, um, but for that amount of money, you may well be better off selling your ones and putting that money towards a new set uh, that would be the correct orientation for you. Um, and then offset on a fork, uh, if you imagine a, a line basically going through the head tube there, um, is how far forward or backwards even, it can be in some extreme cases, um, basically where the fork crowns sit. And it has a massive effect on the handling of a wheel on a bike. In particular, you've heard this talked about with 29 inch wheels. Um, now, previously, a lot of bike manufacturers had more offset on their fork crowns. And the reason for that is they like the stability of the bigger wheel and they like the slacker head angles, but they believed that at lower speeds having increased fork offset gave it the feeling of a steeper head angle. So it felt nice and uh, agile, I guess you would say, uh, but then you get up to speed and it feels nice and stable. But it's taken until now for manufacturers to realize that actually less offset pretty much is better. And it does work more consistently because you would have a slight Jekyll and Hyde approach um, with having more offset, but it's not always the case. It can vary, it does vary on the bike, it varies on the rider, of course, on your preferences. Um, for example, my old Scott bike had quite a lot of offset on it, and I never once felt like I needed less offset on that fork, so it just goes to show it's not always the case, and I think people latch on to new phases and fads and stuff like that in the bike industry, uh, quite a lot of marketing terms, so don't think just because everyone's talking about less offset that you need less offset. Oh, uh, well, there we go. So there's uh, some more Q&A stuff. Uh, if you've got any questions or any comments, let us know in, in the comment section underneath this video. Please don't forget to use the hashtag AskGMBNTech so we know which ones are comments and which ones are questions for the next show. Uh, for a couple more videos, I'm gonna throw you down here to press fit bottom bracket maintenance. Uh, it's a really annoying thing that you do have to do, but if you wanna stop them creaking, that is how you do it. And click down here for something a bit more fun, cable tie hacks. Um, about time I made enough one of those, I think. As always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up here at GMBN Tech. Uh, hit that subscribe button if you've not already done it, and uh, click the notification bell as well, because every time we basically put a video up, you'll get a little notification on your device. Cheers, guys.